What is up, everybody? I am AJ, and I'm going to talk about how I handicap MMA bouts. I will be talking about, you know, everything sort of specific, how it ties into everything general that I sort of consider when I actually, you know, make a decision when placing a bet. Um, also have screen shared here to my rights. These are actually my notes for UFC 258. Uh, we'll get into why I do this, why I think it could help you if you choose to do this and uh, so much more. So I thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, let's just get down to business, shall we? So first things first, I'll address these notes on the right hand side. I, I love to take notes, to be honest, on these on these fights. And, and I know note taking isn't like the sexiest thing to do when researching fights, but it actually saves it saves me a lot of time. Um, I'm able to get more familiar with these fighters by, by noting all these certain things, pausing uh, videos, you know, when wa watching research on Fight Pass, having the commentary team on and, and ultimately learning uh, so much about the types of fighters they are, what to look for in fights, what is valuable, what is not valuable, et cetera, learning from these experts, the guys at the desk, Dan Hardy, Paul Felder, John Anik, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with the, these notes, it's, it, it's a time saver. And what it allows me to do is look at, say, a fighter deeply, it, say if I'm, I'm researching them, they're brand new, look at four fights, take notes, sp specific organized notes, and uh, essentially from there on out, just watch maybe one, maybe two fights if I'm not familiar for their upcoming bout. It saves so much time. Rather than going back and watching hours of, of film on one fighter, I just have to go back and watch one or two fights, or sometimes even less, to just kind of get a refresher on the type of fighter that they are. So, for instance, here, we're looking at Kamar Usman's notes. Um, I got all the things that I wanted to note about him. He's got, you know, the cardio advantage here. He's a BJJ black belt. He fights at a higher pace, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, I'll, and I'll make a statement, and in some cases, I'll note underneath why I think that statement is value uh, valid. I think he's a better uh, wrestler than or better wrestler than Burns because he's got the higher wrestling pedigree. Uh, he's also got better stats. He's never been taken down where we've seen Burns taken down at lightweight. I think uh, Usman's got better entries. He's just a more physical fighter, and he's been able to out wrestle good MMA wrestlers like Rafael dos Anjos. And so with this matchup with Burns, um, I just watched one fight on each of them before I actually placed the bet because just like Usman, I took a lot of notes on Burns as well from all of his previous footage from when I actually, because when I started to do this more diligently, it was more so uh, beginning of last year, April last year, um, when, I, when I started to get my gig with MMA Odds Breaker. Um, I, I, I took it a lot more seriously once I got that, that role with them. And, uh, so basically since May, like, so every, uh, Burns is fight ahead of Woodley. These are all my notes for, for prior to then. And then I also added to it anything that I noted from, from the Woodley fight, because, um, I've only watched one fight of each fighter since then, like I said. So I watched Burns's fight with Woodley and then I watched Usman's fight with Masvidal. And that was enough for me to, to be confident in betting Usman. If you don't already know, I placed a, a max bet, a five unit play on Usman to win at minus 240. And, and it's because I mapped out all the advantage that I think Usman has, like so, based on all the notes that I took. Um, we talked about the wrestling already, but I think Usman's a better clinch fighter. He's got better control. If you want to go for reference, um, ESPN.com. And if you want to sort by the stats, you know, Usman did not surrender a single second of control when he fought Tyron Woodley, nor does he ever really lose the clinch exchanges. Uh, whereas Burns uh, did surrender some clinch control time to Woodley. He's also surrendered clinch control to fighters less physically imposing than Usman, like Gunnar Nelson, right? So when I make these claims, I want to have the evidence to, to back it up, you know, not just say, oh, I, I think Usman's a better wrestler, but people might wonder why. Uh, well, well, now I, well, now we know why, right? So, um, and I always want to keep myself in check when I, when I'm taking these notes, because, uh, it not only paints a picture for myself, not only does it give me more confidence when I place these bets, um, it also just helps the readers just more understand, okay. Oh, he thinks he's a better striker. Oh, he, he thinks he's more technical. He's got some reach, uh, uh, more defensively sound, more power, whatever the reason is. 
And so I, I, I note sort of all the different facets of the fight. So for this one, for instance, there's, there's a clinch, there's wrestling, there's cardio, there's durability, there's the size, volume, uh, in terms of like striking, you know, punches, um, in terms of eye test and stats, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is where the only facet of the fight where I really favor burns, um, defense in terms of wrestling and striking and then power. Um, and, and everybody's got a different way to quantify, but I, I quantify my stances both on stats, which I've become more, uh, I've come around more to stats in, in recent time. I've never been like opposed to them necessarily, but I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm becoming, uh, you know, more familiar with them, factoring them in more. Um, I do think that the stylistic matchup, what I see on tape is more compelling than what the numbers suggest, but the numbers, why I like them is they help paint a picture uh, to, to what I see on tape. It all, it all kind of makes sense. Um, so another to, to go along with the point, you know, I think Usman is more durable because Usman's never been knocked out. We've seen Burns knocked out once, um, and he's been knocked down a few times in the UFC. So again, even though maybe I don't think that Usman has 110% durability than Burns, um, it is still an advantage for him nonetheless in, in some advantage that I will note if they're more compelling than others. Like for instance, I think that Usman does have a massive clinch advantage in terms of control and damage. Uh, you know, like I, Noted before with the clinch control time with, you know, say the Woodley fight, there's that there. Um, you know, I'll note like Usman just working the body, foot stomps, things like that. I know all this stuff. I, and it's just because I want to be more prepared and transparent with the decisions that I make. And, and I get it. It's it's work, but it is, is work that may seem like a lot now, but it actually saves me a lot of time in the future to where, like I said, I'm, I'm watching one fight now in preparation for these fighters. And, uh, part of it is, as I do, I do have a solid memory. I've been blessed with a solid memory, but again, if, if I have all these notes, I could just revisit my notes and then, you know, just watch one fight and go, okay, well that actually paints a picture to what my notes are. And I can maybe note something different because the reality is, especially with fighters like Usman and Burns, they're, they're well into their careers, right? They're, they're not going to be changing all too much fight to fight at least significantly like yeah they're still getting better i mean they're going to the gym they're working hard things like that but for the most part we know the types of fighters that these guys are we're not really expecting any you know sort of new layers to their game you know we're not going to see um <laughs> at least i don't think you know who's been just coming come out there and just throw like a moss beat all me or that's an extreme example but but you get what i'm saying right we, we know the types of fighters that these guys are um we know that they're improving but for the no for the most part they, they have their mo's essentially established right so again, I note all these different things. And again, when I say I, I favor Usman in these exchanges, it's not like I, I can't see Burns having some success, right? Again, I want to always be fair and just when I'm doing these breakdowns. I noted here that uh, Burns does have a, a good, very good low calf kick. He's got very fast hands, a, a very fast uh, counter strikes. He's got a very good left hook that he dropped uh, Olivier Oban Mercier with actually. He's got power. Burns is a very good fighter. So when I'm, when I'm betting these fighters, Part of the reason why I've set percentages is because, you know, I do realize it, it is a fist fight at the end of the day. It, it is a higher variance sport and, and everybody in theory has it has a chance to win. Right. Even if you don't think it's the most likely thing, um, I always set percentages. So I don't get and, I, and I've said this before and I don't mind saying it again is I don't get married to one outcome. I, I don't want to I don't want to act as though the fight is only going to play out one way and, and that's it. I essentially. <laughs> it, you do. I do that enough times and, and eventually I, I'm wrong and I, I could very easily be disappointed, right? But by analyzing the fight in its entirety, factoring in all these different facets of the fight, cardio, durability, uh, striking, pace, wrestling, et cetera, et cetera, I'm, 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 I'm more open-minded. I'm more, um, I guess, willing to, to accept uh, several different outcomes rather than just saying this is the only way the fight is going to go in no way else because we've seen it uh, so often. Obviously the the big favorites much more often than not don't lose. Uh, but, but there are times where they do lose. Right. Um, so, so by doing that, I just feel as though I'm setting my, I'm putting myself in a position to where I'm like, just accepting, you know, just kind of riding the wave again, I'm doing my, my homework, my research, but I'm not having too strong emotions. Uh, however, which way the fight goes, if that makes sense. Um, so that's something that I think is very important. And that's just, uh, you know, the main event where I went really in depth on in my breakdown because it is a max bet. And, um, you know, when, when considering that, um, you know, you know, I, I do think that more justification is, uh, or more rationale is, is just, 
uh, when doing so. Um, cause, cause I typically don't max bet fighters unless if I think that they have pretty much every single box checked. Um, and in this case, I think Usman does outside of purely Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But like we talked about, Usman's got the wrestling advantage. So in theory, Burns might not even be able to get this fight to the ground, right? Yeah. I suppose maybe if he, he rocks Usman with something, maybe it's possible, but, uh, what it comes down to me is, is Usman is going to be the aggregate minute winner of this fight. And, and Burns is more so reliant on moments. And I tend to side with fighters that I think are going to win the aggregate of the strength of the exchanges rather than the moments fighters, the fighters that, that need an opportunity. Otherwise they're more than likely going to be losing. Right. Um, and, and there's been plenty of examples of that in the past. And, you know, I guess an example of that would be, you know, I guess we'll we'll get into it here. Um, Jim Miller and, and Bobby Green, you know, obviously Jim Miller is a, a tremendous uh, veteran. He's very tough. I think that it probably got, does go the full way. But I do think that more often than not, when this fight plays out, Miller kind of needs a moment to to beat Bobby. And again, it's possible. Um you know, it's not like Bobby's like minus a thousand, right? But Miller, I think more often than not, needs to take advantage of a grappling exchange on the ground and and try and submit Green, right? Um, I suppose he could knock him out in theory, but it seems unlikely, very unlikely, because Bobby's got a, a very good chin. Um, and, and Miller's rocked some guys recently, like Clay Guida and Alex White, but you know, more often he's not a huge a, a huge power puncher, right? Um, so it's, it's more so when, when I'm investing in, and I post my bet on Bobby Green wins by decision by doing that, I feel like I'm, I'm investing in the better minute winner in a guy who I think is defensively responsible enough based on footage that I noted of Bobby, um, say against, uh, Tiago Moises, uh, other fights in the past as well. You know, he's just such a veteran as Bobby Green, you know, a guy like Roosevelt Roberts was just, um, with no, with no disrespect, uh, was just a little bit too too green, too uh, raw to be facing a guy like Jim Miller. And we, we saw that in that fight after the fact, um, as we saw Miller get that armbar there. But Bobby Green is definitely a very solid scrambler. He's, he's very tested. Um, he's probably the better wrestler on paper. So in theory, Bobby should be able to, to control where this fight goes. And outside of just a, a quick uh, Miller submission, out, more than likely in round one, I think that the better – uh, minute winner here is going to be Bobby because of similar to the Usman fight, better striker, higher pace, um, more tools on the feet, more varied. He, you know, he, Bobby will utilize uh, the low kick. He'll, he'll counter. Well, as I'm noting here, he could strike while moving backwards. He's uh, got the ability to switch stances. I think he's more technical than Miller. Um, and so, yeah, that should be enough for Bobby to win the aggregate of the striking exchanges. And, and Miller tends to slow down after round one. And I think by investing in Bobby Green wins by decision, I'm getting um, a discounted price because his money line is like minus 250 or so um, on what I personally feel is the most likely outcome. He, he probably beats Miller by decision. Again, it's something I looked at. Bobby has not finished a fight since 2013. And it was by a body kick. Um, he just hasn't. Bobby's a good striker, but he hasn't shown to be a huge power puncher Um at least in recent years, he, he rocked Lando Venata, but for the most part, he's not getting a lot of knockdowns and, and so forth. Um, and he also doesn't have a lot of urgency to finish fights. Um, so I feel like that is a solid spot for me to take a uh, bet on the guy that I think will be winning the aggregate of the, not only the striking, but the wrestling exchanges too. I think that once Miller fatigues, once he gets tired, Bobby uh, could be, uh, could, if he wants to take Miller down and kind of just, uh, earn top control time, do some some damage in top position to kind of avoid uh, a referee stand up, if that makes sense. So um, again, the, these guys that are reliant on moments, it's not that I'm doubting them. It's not that I don't. Th it's not that I don't think that they have no chance of winning. Uh, it's just that I, I tend to side with the fighters that I think uh, have more more ways to win. They're they're the better round winners. They got those the ability to fight at a higher pace. They're more technical. They're more well rounded. Uh, things like that are, are things that I, I really value a lot in fighters. I don't bet fighters that um, I think they're just kind of outmatched or they can't control where the fight goes. Um, you know, in, in an instance like that, it's 
Um, like I, and again, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a hot take or anything, but you know, guys like Anthony Hernandez and Diego Lima, you know, you could get to a point in theory where you could talk yourself into betting any underdog, right? I mean, you could say that this guy's got a chance to win. I mean, in theory, it's possible, right? These guys all have chances to win, but do you think they will win if they, if outside of just a, a knockout shot on the feet? And if I don't think that a fighter has other ways to win besides a, a knockout, a standing knockout, I tend to not, uh, you know, I, I personally, I, I would be completely off of them. I would probably be willing to bet, bet against them. And that's kind of how I saw the team where Valia versus Martin Day fight last card was even though I got Valia at minus 350, I just thought he was the much better fighter than Day. And it seemed kind of scary laying that price because we saw Valia uh, finished by Trevor Jones the fight prior, but he was just a much better fighter than Day in, in many areas. And that was a price I was willing to pay uh, thinking that Day's only chance to beat Valia was by a quick knockout. And that's kind of how I see if, if Lima beats Muhammad, he has to, I think, knock him out on the feet. Um, it's possible that he defends takedowns, but the footage has shown me that Lima, I mean, if you want to look at the Jesse Taylor fight, the Yushin Okami fight, he's been taken down. Muhammad is, is not, he's been taken down, not only taken down, but also controlled. Uh, Muhammad has shown to be a very capable wrestler and, and shown to land takedowns in volume over the course of 15 minutes. Uh, Muhammad has shown to have mu the much better cardio, which is another thing that I value. Uh, cardio is very important in fights. Um, better volume, better technique on the feet, more variety. So as you could kind of guess here, I'm, I'm favoring Muhammad in a lot of areas, and I think he should be a big favorite. And I, I think that, you know, outside of just, again, him getting one punch – KO'd, he should win the aggregate of the exchanges here, and that's why he's uh, such a big favorite. And so, over 15 minutes of a fight, I, I think that Muhammad is rightfully a massive favorite. Um, and same thing with Rodolfo Vieira. I mean, for Hernandez to win, he has to overcome many hurdles, right? So, let's think about this. Hernandez will need to do a, a couple different things to win. He'll need to stuff takedowns from Vieira, keep the fight standing, and you know either knock him out or or just do do more damage over the course of fifteen minutes and get the uh, and get his hand raised on the judges' square cards. Again, anything is possible in this game, but why Vieira, in my opinion, is rightfully a huge favorite here. He's more physical. I think he's a better wrestler, and I just had to go back to the the Marcus Prez fight with. Um, Anthony Hernandez, where he was taken out from the body lock and he gave up his back. And now he's facing a guy who is an excellent Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, possibly the best we've seen, one of the best we've ever seen um, in the UFC. And so Hernandez will have to weather a, a huge storm in order to, to win. And it's not that I'm doubting him, but why I don't want to take an underdog shot there um, is, is just because I think stylistically he's, he's outmatched. Um, I tend to not back fighters that I think need to weather a, a severe storm early. And I, I bet Poirier against McGregor kind of knowing that McGregor was going to be a threat early. But I didn't think that it was like just, um, I guess, a, a tremendous amount of danger. Not like, because kind of, it's a striker's battle, right? I mean, there, there's enough variance. There's enough layers in Poirier's striking game uh, to where – it wouldn't be this huge shock to see him not get blown out by Connor on the feet. Whereas you have an elite Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner take somebody down past their guard. The, the, the writing is, is essentially on the wall. And unless if Hernandez could kind of buck him off, uh, get him really tired. It's, it's pretty much going to be a, a Vieira submission there. Uh, Cause he's got him right in his wheelhouse. Whereas, you know, again, Connor's a great striker and he's very dangerous, but Poirier is also a great striker and he's also uh, dangerous as well. So I don't tend to side with that fighter that I think needs to weather a, a major storm early on in order to overcome. I tend to want to think that they have a, a solid chance to win some of those early exchanges, which I did think that Poirier uh, certainly had a chance to, and that's why I was willing to back him there. Um, I tend to side with those fighters. And Another thing is I tend to side with fighters that I think could control where the fight goes. I tend to side with fighters that if it's in a striker versus grappler matchup, and we'll go to it, 
uh, say, for instance, Jillian Robertson uh, taking on Miranda Maverick. I favor Jillian because she'll she I think she's likely to take the fight to the ground, which is where she holds the advantage, in my opinion. Um, it was it's a similar type of thought process to my bet with Omari Akhmadov versus Tom Breeze. I acknowledge Breeze was the better striker. It was hard for me <laughs> not to look at tape and, and see that and acknowledge it. And I did acknowledge it in my breakdown. But why I kept Akhmadov as the favorite, why I bet him as an underdog, because that's essentially value there, right? If I if he's an underdog, but I think he should be a favorite at, at plus. I think I'm at like plus 115. I capped him at 60%, so minus 150. So there's definitely some wiggle room there. I thought Akhmadov was going to be able to take Breeze down. Um, why did I think he was going to be able to take him down? Well, I, I looked at the uh, Kata Nakamura fight, which was at 170 pounds, where, where Breeze was taken down from the body lock. He got controlled there. Um, and even against Brandon Allen, he didn't truly get taken down, but he lost a scramble there and, and was controlled on his back. And, and Amari's a, a very strong grappler. Um, so that's why I kept him as the favorite. He should be able to control where the fight goes, and that's kind of why I think Jillian should be favored. She, she's not the better striker here. That's not the argument to my bet. Miranda is a better striker. Again, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty obvious looking at tape and seeing that. Miranda is more varied. Uh, she comes from a Muay Thai background. Um, that's a pretty good telltale that she's the better striker. She's an excellent rhythm striker, Miranda. We saw that in her UFC debut. Uh, that that is ultimately enough for me to favor her in a stand-up battle, even though I do think Jillian's striking is improving. Uh, she's got serviceable footwork. She cuts different angles, um, faints a lot, things like that. But her striking is a means to an end, which is great, right? Because if you're if you're backing Jillian, uh, at least from, from my viewpoint, is, is you know what she's going to try and do here. Uh, she's going to try and take Miranda down. And, and I like that about her in this matchup because Miranda has – been taken down and controlled in her regional footage. And it is, there's always risks with, with every bet that I make. No bet is ever, you know, hundred percent safe lock city. No, no, no. I don't believe in any of that. It's part of the reason why I set percentages. Um, Miranda, I think will need to have made significant improvements since her regional footage uh, that I was alluding to where she was taken down and controlled in order for her to win this fight. Um, and again, it is possible. She's a young lady. I think she's talented. I think that she she is a very talented prospect. But I'm willing to take the underdog shot on Jillian with the thought process of she's going to be able to control where this fight goes, uh, where she has the advantage on the ground. I think she's a better grappler. She's shown the ability to chain wrestle. Uh, she could switch from a double leg to a single leg, vice versa. She could take you down from the body lock, from caught kicks. Uh, she's got a good top control pressure, pressure, good guard passer, utilizes the Dagestani handcuffed and uh, handcuff, excuse me, and his nice uh, finishing ability. You know, she's got nice elbows in top position, and she's got submission capability. Um, so I'm, I'm always willing to to be wrong on, on these sort of reads, it, but but there are risks that I would like to reiterate that I, I am willing at the end of the day to, to take on. Um, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but um, at the end of the day, I can only assess a fight based off of what we know right now. Um, and, and if I see Miranda's, if we see Jillian just go out there and, and attempt a lot of takedowns and Miranda just stuff every single one of them and, and just light her up on the feet, it's going to look like a bad bet. But <clears throat> that's something that I, I'm open to, to learning. I could, you know, take that information. And if Miranda gets matched up in a, a, a um, if Miranda gets matched up with an opponent who is largely con con contingent on getting the fight to the ground and she's got the advantage standing, lines reasonable, I consider better her there. I mean, there's always reason to sort of capitalize on that uh, sort of opportunity, right? Um, uh, case in point, uh, Gavin Tucker, I guess uh, a lot of people were, were questioning what he would look like after his layoff uh, from the Rick Glenn fight, right? And a lot of people were, were back in Choi, and I understand it. Choi had a lot of reach on him, and we saw him struggle with the longer Glenn. Uh, but that fight, even though I didn't bet a side there, I was able to assess Tucker in that matchup and say, hey, this guy's actually wrestling now. He's attempting several takedowns. He's utilizing his jujitsu. His striking looks sharp. And as a result, I bet him against Justin James, and I bet him against um, uh, Billy Quarantillo. So I'm always willing to learn. I'm not willing to be, uh, you know, I guess biased is the right word and be like, you know, I'm only backing this fighter. And, and until I see them lose, like I'm, I'm never, I'm never, riding with them. You know what I mean? Like, or I'm not getting like too strong emotionally 
uh, either way. I'm just looking at the matchup. And, and this is a, an example where I actually bet against Jillian in her last fight when she fought Tyla Santos. Um, and, and I think that is another example of recency bias. We saw Jillian pretty much dominated for three rounds by Santos. But and Miranda's strong. I mean, she again, offensively, I think her grappling is – is definitely is definitely very capable, but um, it is a chance I'm willing to take, right? Um, so again, that's a kind of a longer breakdown there, but I think that you know Jillian is a better grappler due to all these advantages here that I have in my notes. Again, the chain wrestling that I'm noting here. Uh, again, she could catch kicks and take you down, and I'm referencing. I always reference like fights too, and I'll, not always, but in some cases, if I can't remember, like I'm, I'm referencing the Macedo fight where she took Macedo down with a caught kick. Um, to again, just kind of be more transparent with myself. Uh, okay, why did I think this? Where, where, did, where did I see this from? Okay, it's from this fight. Oh, I don't have to go back and watch it. You know, so again, it goes back to that earlier point we were talking about with save time, be more efficient. And as a result, I just am, I'm I'm in the film room a lot less now, and I love it. And again, I, I love watching fights, but if I could save myself time while also being more effective with with my decisions, I'm well. Hey, I'm all about it, right? Um. So yeah, that, that's just an example there uh, of in terms of like being able to control where the fight goes makes me confident that I'm going to favor that fighter. And another example here is, you know, Mallory Martin going against Pollyanna Viana. Just like Robertson, I think that if Martin wants Viana down, she could probably take her down. Um, but. I kind of agree where the odds are at. I don't think that there's value on Martin's line. And plus, she is a fighter where, again, I favor her on the feet. I think she's better technically. But it's not like this scenario where I think that it's just like Martin's just going to light her up on the feet like Viana's, you know, completely outgunned. No, Viana's got some reach. I thought her striking looked better last time out against Whitmire. Uh, she's dangerous. Uh, she's got a few knockouts and we we saw Martin nearly stopped last time by Cyphers, right? So it's not like this fight where even though I'm favoring Martin on the feet, it's not like I can't see the, the path where Viana could win, win, win some of the striking exchanges, right? And ultimately the fight. With Martin though, I would need to be very confident that she's going to be persistently pursuing takedowns. And this goes back to another point with fighters that, you know, have a certain skill set, but they don't always go to it as often as I'd like them to in order to warrant a bet. Martin is a solid wrestler, a solid grappler. She's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, but she goes through large phases of her fights where she doesn't attempt takedowns. Uh, we saw it even just her last fight against Hannah Cyphers. There's even, you know, on her contender series fight as well. And so I want fighters that, I want to back fighters that I, I feel confident that they, they know what to do. They, like they have a clear game plan and that is likely going to be what they're going to do. Um, Carla Esparza against Marina Rodriguez, right? It was pretty clear that she wasn't going to beat Marina on the feet. She needed to land takedowns there. And so I, I felt good about Carla at an underdog price. I thought she, she should have been favored based on the fact that she should have been able to control where the fight went. And uh, again, it was a very close fight, a split decision, but I liked her for that reason. She was able to, to win the wrestling exchanges because she was the better wrestler and um, ultimately take – Rodriguez out of her zone, out of her striking element. Um, and, and so that is definitely something that I consider. As far as it will, will go for the takedown, whereas Martin will go through large phases of not attempting the takedown. A um, couple other examples here. I just do not really back fighters coming off long layoffs either. Um, I just don't. It's just a lot of risks. Uh, long layoff, inactivity. It's part of the reason why I was hesitant with McGregor as such a big – uh, such, such a big price on Poirier. Um, he looked great against Cerrone, but we only saw him for 40 seconds. And again, there's plenty of examples. I remember Vince Pichel back in the day in like 2017, he came back uh, and, and knocked out Damian Brown. Uh, he looked great. Uh, you know, there's been plenty of example of fighters come Vince Pichel the second time against uh, uh, Jim Miller, Roosevelt Roberts, just fighters that come in off layoffs that, that look great. Um, but as a betting guy, I don't want to back them. And and again, it's not to say that they can't win. DraftKings is different. Again, we'll, we'll get to this fight here, and I'm referring to Marquez and Patolo. But, you know, Marquez, this time off, maybe he's gotten better in the meantime. He's, you know, 30, so he's, you know, in theory, entering his prime. 
But I, I would need to be banking that Marquez is a, a better fighter than what he showed on his uh, you know pre layoff tape to to bet him here, and I just cannot justify that. Um, I can't. I think him and Patolo are actually very similar fighters. To be honest, I think they both sort of thrive in the brawl. But we're getting a guy here in Marquez who I think is favored because he's got maybe he's still got a little bit of hype on him, even though he is taking all this time off, but it's, uh, it's the hype factor. Hype is real. And, and that's something that inflates betting lines. And I, I choose, I tend to, you know, pick and choose with the underdog spots where I think it makes the most sense to, to, to be on the other side. Uh, but this is a matchup where I do think it is truly dog or pass. You know, Patolo has been much more active. He's fought six times. Marquez has not fought since the summer of 2018. Um, so I like this fight for DraftKings, but as far as a bet goes, putting my money on Marquez coming in on a, on a long layoff, I need to be banking uh, that he he looks a lot better than, say, he did uh, in the DiCherico fight. And it's not to say that that's impossible. I just don't know how I right now could justify a bet. If, if he goes out there, and I, I hope he goes out there and looks great, and then maybe a decision could be made uh, as it pertains to one of his fights in the future. But for right now, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the fight, and that's more than okay. Um, I do not feel the need to to bet on every single fight on the on the card, nor do I ever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we talked about a lot of different things. So yeah, I guess like the, the key the key talking points is just for me is is look at all the different facets of the fight. And that, again, I'm referring to the striking exchanges in open space, clinch, wrestling, you know, grappling on the mat, you know, jujitsu. Um, how do they scramble? You know, do, do they are they content to just play on their backs and play guard like Pollyanna Vienna guard players. who can't find the sub typically lose rounds because they're on their back. Unless if they're just doing a lot of, you know, damage via elbows and the person in top position isn't doing a whole lot. Um, but that is something that's very important, you know, but go, finishing on my point, you know, grappling on the mat, cardio, durability, power, it's all stuff that's very, very important. And so I guess I would like to, to leave you with this is again, for me, it's, it's don't get married to one outcome. Just map everything out. It, it helps tremendously to take notes. It may be just a, a pain right now, but you will thank yourself in the future for, for doing it because you, you will have to watch so much less tape on these fighters because you'll just simply be more familiar with them. I mean, you will be taking these notes, memorizing them as you're, as you're typing. And again, I, th I think it's a huge help. You can take your own notes. For me, again, I like to, to make statements and then also uh, back it up as to why. You know, here I've got Ian Heinish has some power. He hurt Derek Brunson here. He hurt Gerald Mearshart. He hurt Cesar Ferreira. He's got some knockouts on his resume. So I, I want to always make a, make a, uh, you know, bet, use evidence to, to back up a statement. Um, so again, it, it's all tying together that big picture of, of who do we favor in the fight and, and why are we favoring them? Well, th there's all these different facets of the fight again, and intangible things are important. Uh, like, like we talked about layoff, um, you know, maybe there's some things that a fighter said in an interview is this maybe a little question mark. Maybe some things happen at weigh-ins that, uh, you know, fighter misses weight that makes you question. Uh, to me, the stylistic matchup is is the most compelling facet uh, of handicapping fights. Uh, again, I'm going to say it once more. Uh, striking, grappling on the mat, wrestling, clinch exchanges, pace, durability, power, um, defense, uh, you know, just – all that sort of stuff. It, it, it may seem like a lot, but when you're actually sitting down and typing it and organizing your note, it's actually very uh, simplistic. Uh, it's just not something that I see everybody do. And it is something that I think you you will benefit from if, if you do it. So um, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, I hope you guys found this insightful. Again, this is how I handicap fights, just kind of generically. And then also uh, citing some examples here as it pertains to this uh, tremendous UFC 258 card. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, best of luck on the event.